Hello everyone, welcome to my stream. I'm George, you can find me as uh, Volcero in various uh, different uh, Amiga forums. Uh, welcome, it's Friday and what we do every Friday, it's Amiga time. So yeah, we are going to continue our journey with the PyStorm 32 Lite for the Amiga 1200 and uh, we are here to dig even, even further and continue where we left the previous week. Uh, please let me know if the sound is bad, if you want me to make any adjustment. Uh, and let me welcome uh, everyone in the chat. I see that SLD Snake is there, Retro, Mo Retro Modernist. Welcome guys. And uh, C2 is, all, uh, is here as again. And we, who else? If you are there, Javier, welcome, welcome. Uh, to the stream. If you are there, say hello on the chat so I can see your um, uh, username and uh, let's start uh, discussing about Amiga. Um, we have uh, music again for today from the mods uh, jukebox that is hosted from Abime and which is, as I said before, my um, loved uh, website to listen to live music and mod music, not live music, mod music actually. Uh, hello JMA80, welcome to the stream. And uh, yeah, uh, in case uh, Javier says I am out drinking some beers, we'll try to see stream us up. Have a, a good time, take care and uh, yeah, let's uh, join us later when you go back home or wherever you are more uh, comfortable to, to watch the stream. Um, I don't know if you uh, if you know, uh, but today is uh, the first day for a revision, and uh, revision is one of the biggest uh, demo uh, scene uh, parties. Uh, it's uh, happening in Germany, and today it's the first day. Uh, there are a lot of uh, seminars and things to, to watch online. Every, everything is um, covered on live streams. So uh, if you have time, please uh, have a look on the, the streams because it's uh, uh, great and it has uh, so many different uh, events, music, demos, graphics, photos, uh, whatever uh, almost everything that the demo scene is doing is there and it's uh, quite interesting um, to be honest with you i reserved this uh, weekend this easter weekend to to watch the the revision and uh, yeah it's uh, i'm doing that every year because it is great i'm still uh, thinking to 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 visit the next or some of the future revisions uh, because as an experience should be quite interesting. I've never been in one. So yeah, I would like to do to go there sometime. Uh, SLT Snake says, I was watching a local satellite revision stream earlier. Right, great. It, the, the satellite for, for you that uh, you might not know what the satellite are. Um, in every country uh, during the revision, they gather into a place with computers or not. They have a lot of uh, beers and alcohol and they watch uh, the revision through the streams all together. So people gather together and uh, watch the, the revision and having fun. And there are some uh, times in, during the revision where they go uh, and connect with the revision uh, organizers and they have a, a little bit of fun all together and they say what they are doing at this country and they give more information and that's it uh, yeah uh, most of the times uh, Spain Italy Sweden Norway all over the place they are connected with the revision and it's a good uh, good thing to do um, so yeah that's that's all about ah the the um, website for the revision is 2024.revision-party.net So 
if you would like to, to have, a, have a look, go there. They have this uh, timetable and the main things that are, uh, are more interesting for me are some seminars that they are doing, especially tomorrow. Uh, and they have also the, the combo contest and the Amiga intros are tomorrow, late at night. And on Sunday we have the Amiga demos, of course, again, late at night. So, uh, so if, you, if you are into the demos and the intros and all this stuff, it's, it's great to watch it. Uh, but, have that in mind, if you have time, have a look on uh, the revision this year. Uh, so, what we are going to see today in my stream, we are going to continue the work with the 1200 and the PyStorm. Uh, just a reminder, we are setting up Amiga OS 3.2 on this machine from scratch. We will add more uh, applications. We had some issues last uh, week with this PCMCIA. After a while, after an hour, uh, I found the solution for the problems that we had last week and I will show you uh, how it works. Let me uh, start the, the, the Amiga and while it boots, let me switch. And um, yeah, you remember that the PCMCA was really slow. Uh, you, we were trying to see the, the files and it was uh, slow, really, really slow, so it was not working well. And um, let's see how it goes now. So right now, as soon as I connected that to the PCMCIA, you see that the icon uh, showed up and I click on that, everything show up instantly, you see how fast it is and everything is there. Let me extract something, for example this signs editor, uh, execute command. And you see how fast this is working, right? Hello FFSoc, welcome to the stream. It's pretty fast. You can do from PCMCA uh, copies, extractions to, to RAM or everything quite fast, way faster than if you had a subway on this machine to connect to a USB. Uh, that's why I, it is my preferred way to transfer files to uh, the Amiga and because as you have seen uh, when you as soon as you connect it you have the hard disk uh, mounted and you can use it uh, like any other uh, hard disk so yeah it, it is done already so the, what I did to, to solve that issue if you remember I was uh, I said before that uh, there is a, um, um, a package on Aminet that has the device for the Compact Plus, the CF card, and it has the uh, FAT95 uh, included, and also has uh, some other um, uh, utilities that uh, solve the issue with uh, the PCMCIA when you first boot from cold boot. Uh, the problem was that the FAT95 and the Compact Flash uh, device were quite old. On Aminet there are uh, newer versions of this uh, software uh, and let's see and then what I did I downloaded the newer versions and created a, my own ADF file to include them 
so that I am able to, to mount it through the uh, external Gotek. But let's see um, which versions are the ones that are working for me. At least with this card. So for the FAT95, uh, the version, the latest version is 3.18 from 2013 and for the compact flash device which is this one compact flash device the version is 1.33 from 2017 so in case you have such a converter from PCMCA to CF card and it is quite slow like uh, we say, have seen uh, in the previous stream try those versions of uh, the drivers and i hope that it is going to work fine for me for this uh, uh, converter and for this uh, cf card uh, it is working flawlessly as you have seen uh, and that was the the reason why uh, the previous uh, stream was taking so much time uh, to to open any any file from the CF card, right? Exactly, SLD Snake. Everything is simple as long as you find the the solution. You see, most of the times when you have uh, any problem uh, with uh, software on uh, for the Amiga, uh, the most time-consuming consuming thing is to find what exactly is the problem and that's why I'm, I, I like to do these uh, streams like I not, do not prepare anything and have everything uh, done during the stream because um, what I like to, to show here is that uh, okay we have a problem what how should we think to Exactly, how to, to understand the problem, as you said, SLD Snake, and how to think, to how to solve it. If you remember, uh, in the previous stream, we tried to update the Amiga OS 3.2 in case that it was a problem with the uh, version of the Amiga OS. Uh, but I, I, I didn't think uh, to check the, the versions of the... Uh, drivers and yeah that was uh, the mistake uh, let's say I think that this uh, screen is uh, freezed let me check yeah okay Cool. So um, right now it's working. So what we are going to see uh, today? If you remember, uh, last week we installed the software, the Picasso 96, uh, to have the an RTG to, to install RTG on this machine. So today we are going to see uh, what we can connect to the PyStorm to get uh, access to the HDMI and uh, what we need to, to install uh, to, to, to configure the RTG what we need to do so we can get RTG output from the PyStorm so uh, what I'm going to do now is to shut down the Amiga And I will show you some uh, hardware that I bought uh, specifically for this uh, job Which we are going to install together um, So from the uh, Alinea, uh, the website from Alinea You can uh, visit it at amiga-shop.net um, Alinea has some um, Expansion, expansion cards that go at the back of the Amiga 1200 and uh, you can connect various things there to get access to USB, uh, SD cards, uh, network and uh, uh, all this stuff and uh, also uh, HDMI 
or DVI. They call this uh, uh, they call this expansions uh, as Omniport. There are uh, multiple different versions uh, depending on what exactly you want to to use and uh, how to uh, what is your uh, rest of the hardware for example you need to have a different omniport if you want to connect uh, an uh, individual and have access to the video output of the individual so for the pi storm the pi storm has a, a uh, USB ports, HDMI port, and uh, uh, it has also the network card, right? The network card right now and the USB ports are not working if you are using the EMU68, so we are not going to use them. But the HDMI port is quite usable. So what I, I bought is this card here. This is Omniport and I don't know if this is clear here. This is for the Ice Drake version 4 edition. The Ice Drake is the expansion card that uh, is developed by the Apollo team. And that card gives uh, uh, output for HDMI, output for uh, network uh, like this uh, expansion here. So what is needed actually is to have a way to connect HDMI, to connect the network, and uh, a header to connect the uh, USBs. So that card, hello my head five, welcome to the strip. So that card is, uh, it could be used uh, with uh, PyStorm as well. Actually, I conducted a, the uh, I conducted a, a linear, uh, and asked them to confirm this before I buy it, um, and they told me that it should work just fine because the only thing that this is doing is being a pass through uh, to the to these connectors. So it should work just fine with the Python, and of course they provide. Uh, a back plate for for it that can go like that and you have the back of the Amiga covered and looking just fine so we have here the HDMI that we care today and that's what we I'm going to to install today uh, with us uh, with you also uh, Alina gives uh, has available some uh, cables uh, for HDMI and for uh, uh, LAN I bought everything just to be be ready whenever these are working are going to work for the Pi Storm I wanted to, to be ready to, to use it so I bought this here this uh, cable which is flat cable and has HDMI from both sides so I can uh, use it inside the Amiga and they have some uh, also some small cables for uh, for LAN for the future so um, let's install this and see how it goes and see if we break everything the the only problem that I have right now is that whenever we want to go to RTG I'm going to move the uh, cable that I am using and uh, we are going to do the switch from the native uh, Amiga uh, output and the, the RTG uh, a little bit manually so bear with me with that uh, it's going to be fun until at some point uh, the PyStorm team are going to have uh, ready the, the pass-through that they are working that is going to take the native uh, Amiga output from one of these chips uh, and drive it to the PowerStorm and everything goes out from the same uh, output. Until then, we need to, to do it a little bit manually. <laughs> or have a, a, a monitor that supports, has two, two inputs 
and uh, have both of them uh, connected all the time. Until then, we will see. Uh, for now, we are going to go manually. So, SLT Snake says, cool, some short cables inside and that's it. Yeah, exactly. I expect that this is going to work just fine, but you never know. I don't know if anyone tried an Omniport with Python, but it, it, should, it should work just fine because as they said, the only thing that it does is taking the output from the, the Pystorm and drive that to the... Um, sorry, to the, to, the, to the back of the, the card, right? So it should work. So the first thing that I'm doing is to put the back port. This is 3D printed but it's quite, quite nice. Uh, you can see here placed at the, at the back so you don't have this ugly uh, empty space um, and then I'm going to put the Omniport uh, in, uh, at, the, at the Alinea also they have cables uh, for the USBs uh, which from the one side they have the USB port and the other side they have the headers so that it can be connected on uh, the Omniport. Quite useful when this is going to work. Uh, until then, it's not uh, when it go it's going to work with the uh, PyStorm of course because right now MU68 doesn't support that. So, we will see how it goes. Mm. Okay, I think I got it. So, it has uh, the Omniport comes with the uh, little screw that you need to, to put and keep it in place. And let me screw it in place. Cool. So that's how it goes into the, the place. Okay. Let me see if the HDMI gets in there easily. If you remember uh, the previous stream, we didn't do any major configuration for the uh, RTG. So we are going to do everything today. Yeah, the HDMI gets in there just fine. So, what I'm going to do now is to connect the HDMI output from the um, Pi Store and drive it to the Omniport. Okay, like that. So, and if we are fine now, I don't see anything else that we need to do. I will connect back the keyboard and the, the lights. Okay. of the cables so let's see how it goes Dora So for now we have the output from the uh, native uh, 
the native Amiga output. Uh, SLD Snake says the, the people from Warp 1260 sold with the card same some adapter similar to that from yours. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, probably yeah because the Warp 3, uh, 1260 they have uh, uh, NHDMI output, right? They don't, for example, the uh, Indivision gives you a cable that ends to the um, to the DVI but the, that's the, 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 uh, the CR version the Indivision 2 CR version goes to the HDMI the, the one that I have on my 1230 goes to a header so there is an Omni port that can be used which um, has the same uh, header and drives it to um, sorry let me stop the music because it doesn't work well like that okay so it goes to the the header and drives it to an HDMI or DVI depending what the, the they are using um, the Omni ports are quite uh, uh, useful there are um, I bought some time ago uh, one that uh, connects to B-Vision and also has uh, a header for um, a, scan doubler, a different scan doubler uh, expansion. Um, the problem with that is that if you connect both of them you cannot uh, have something like an automatic uh, switch. It doesn't switch at all. You have it, uh, although that it has uh, both of the headers there, it uses one of them only. Uh, hello, Aris Amitya, welcome to the stream. So, right now we have that ready. It seems the system to work just fine. Let me switch the screen. The system seems to work just fine. So, uh, let's uh, set up RTG. If you remember, we have Picasso 96 mode here and also in screen mode we have already set up uh, 1024 to 384 let's try to create a, um, a resolution um, 1024 like that active high color true color okay let me see how we can make it and I think that if we click on test right now it tries to output from the uh, the RTG let's see will it work okay as you can see we have the output from the uh, RTG, which is working fine. 1024, 768, 16 uh, bit color. Great. So we are going to get back. Sorry about that. I'm going to do all the time this switch with the cable, but bear with me. Um, so we are going to get back and try to save it and then we are going to set it as a screen mode for our system. So, come on. Okay, I lost some screen here with that converter.
Okay, I think we got it now. Uh, come on. Okay, we are alive. <laughs> stay, stay tuned. It's funny what these things are doing. Uh, okay, let's see. So we tested that, it works. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to try. That's what happens when you have a so old uh, hardware, I guess. And try to do <laughs> more modern stuff. So it does say that it needs to reboot. Okay, let's reboot and see what is going on. If it, this is going to help at all. Uh, it seems that the uh, Flickr fixer was working, but it had some issues. Let's see. Yeah, it has some issues right now. Okay. Yes, it works. Somehow. Not so reliable. That's why I'm go I want to, to go to the RTG as soon as possible. Let's see how it goes. Okay, do we have that resolution now? Oh, come on. Yeah, I sell this like the issues are becoming big issues. Yeah, exactly. The problem with that is it, it gets too hot for some reason. I don't know if the problem is, uh, you know, I have here uh, different cables to, and converters from one uh, format to the other because it gives you VGA output and then I have to convert it to HDMI and then scale it up. It's, it's a mess. So let's see. Okay, now it seems more stable. Cool. So we have a lot of, ah, okay. So it got all the, the different resolutions as you can see here. A lot of stuff. So let's go with the one that we tested. Okay. We tested with the 16 bit. Okay, let me use it. Cancel, test it but first. Okay, let's go and test it. Does it work? Did it time out? Maybe time out. Ah, you know, when you test the screen mode, it times out and returns to the previous one. So maybe it timed out. So let me click on use. So everything is going to work to, to change to RTG. But it's not going to be saved. So in case it's not working, I am going to reboot the Amiga and then set it, uh, uh, get back to the native one. Yeah, yeah, it works, it works. And we have RTG now, woohoo, much more clear screen, right? We have all the, the screen uh, visible, so let me save it. 
save okay and let me try other screens as well can it go to 32 bit it seems it works use that's great so 32 bit for the 1200 through the pystorm and it seems seems quite fast so if i open tools you see the refresh is instant right everything is instant that's very nice and what will happen if we go to higher modes let's test um, i don't know can we go 1080p 1080p it has 1080p 32 bit test it seems it works <laughs> okay use that's what i call a great uh, resolution <laughs> and if i see there are even higher resolutions and uh, video core yeah and there are smaller resolutions as well so yeah that's that's nice uh yeah retro modernist it is so and it the thing is that even on 1080p the refresh is really fast right so what would you suggest should i should i go to um, a smaller uh, screen so we can have a better look of the text and all this stuff because this needs a um, let's try 720p if it works yeah it seems to work yep seems to work just fine so let me save that because it's 16 to 9 and it seems uh, much better and more uh, easy to to read the the text because if you go to 1080p you have to change the fonts you have to do things like that uh jma says uh, i use 720p higher and icons get too small yeah of course 1080p uh, but maybe a reconfiguration of font sizes is needed exactly as the snake I use 720p too, more comfortable in a 22 inch uh, widescreen, yeah, uh, monitor, uh, clean image and not so small, yeah, so I'm going to keep it at uh, 720p. The only thing that you have to have in mind though is that this screen can be used by any application that supports RT RTG and uh, every game that runs on uh, workbench or every any game that supports uh, rtg as well but native uh, games that use the uh, chipset of the amiga are going to uh, output from the uh, native uh, output at the back of the amiga so in case you have such a, a configuration the solution that I will try to implement is if your monitor gets two uh, inputs, one VGA and one for uh, the HDMI, I will try to have that connected, both of them uh, at the monitor and then switch by the monitor switch. If not, then maybe you might need to have uh, two different monitors or do whatever I do, I'm doing today by moving the cable from one to the other another solution might be to drive both of them to hdmi and find an external switch that helps when you have uh, multiple hdmis and uh, usually they have a button to switch from different inputs sld snake says that that's the point rtg versus native they both coexist until the, that scan doubler for pystorm uh, arrives exactly I'm looking forward for that. So as soon as this is going to be available, I'm going, to, I, I, I hope I'm going to be able to, to buy it and uh, test this out. So yeah, 
that screen is crystal clear. I like it a lot. So what else we can install? Let me see what I have here. Um, first of all, what I would like to do is to go to tools and hard disk toolbox. The other time we were trying to, yeah, BRCM EMMC device. Okay, let's see. Does it work now? No. Something, which device is the one that we should use? Let me find the documentation again. I would like to, to create a, a new partition for applications so we can start installing stuff and also try some uh, games, WHD load games and things like that. So we need some extra partitions. So if I'm not wrong, here it says BRCM SDHC. Was this the one that we were using? Let me get back. BRCM BRCM SDHC device. Okay, save. Now we see everything. That's great. And uh, let's set up a new uh, partition. Partition drive. Now for the file system, we have only installed the FFS, which comes with the uh, system. It's the default file system for Amiga OS, right? Now, I don't know what you, you prefer to use. I tried the PFS, which is quite uh, fast and um, uh, secure. What I didn't like about PFS, it has a, a characteristic that um, when you save uh, your data to the file, it takes a few, one or two seconds to do that. Uh, because first it caches them and then it writes them, as much as I understand. The other file system that I prefer to use is the smart file system, SFS. And the smart file system, there are some uh, tools out there in case um, your uh, partition breaks down so that you can save the files. It's not working every time, but uh, I haven't found something similar for PFS, so I don't know if that uh, exists for PFS. And that's the reason why I prefer to go with the SFS, this uh, smart file system. So let's install first that uh, smile, uh, smart file system. I think I have the files here. I have a folder named essential. Uh, please let me know the, the, the fonts are uh, readable on your screens or would you like me to to uh, make them bigger so i have here uh, okay so the for the smart file system you can find i think on aminet the version 1.277 and this one you will see that the, the, the archive is almost 500k and this one includes all the some utilities and the documentation. So I prefer first to use this one to extract that so that I have all the information and then go with the update that is 1.279. Um, and there is also one update 1.280 uh, that was released at some point but I don't know how uh, if this one has any any extra issues any bugs so usually I'm using the 279 because that was the official and I think you can still uh, find it on Aminet the 1.280 uh, it's not on Aminet 
as much as I know. And it was available on uh, the website, the official website of the, of the file system and from the developer. So I'm not sure if that is a well-tested uh, version. So what I'm going to do now is to open the, the a new shell. Okay, and uh, extract the version 1.277 to run. Okay, so let me open that. And that's the folder. I'm going to take that and copy it as it is into utilities. Because that's uh, the place to, to put your custom uh, applications usually. Uh, and when I'm saying custom, I mean the ones that uh, do not come with the uh, operating system. And it doesn't have an installer you see, uh, there is a SFS, SFS salve application to salvage uh, files from a broken file system. It doesn't have an installer, but there is, where is it? I think there is a documentation on how to install. Yeah, it is here. SFS old guide. On how, uh, I don't believe how fast this is and uh, there is also this folder Amiga OS 3.x that has in here tools uh, and the L folder with the file system SLD Snake says the font can be read it uh, watching the stream in the monitor. Okay, cool. So, usually when you have a file system, when you want to add a file system, the, the main tool that you need is always in the L folder. And that's all you need for the Amiga OS. So, the, what I need to install these SFS is to go to the L folder of the system partition. And uh, let me do that. As you can see here, we have the fast file system, the FAT95 and so many others. And copy that file in here. Okay. The second thing that you need to do is to go to the hard disk toolbox. Hard disk toolbox. And add that, part, that uh, file system to the known file systems. To do that, you have to go to the partition. Um, let's say that, sorry, cancel. Partition drive, new partition here. Let's select something like, um, that's enough advanced options and click on add update here you see that the known the, uh, the only known partition is the fast file system so what we need to do is to add a new file system and select the smart file system from the uh, l folder okay and here you will see that this this is the, the, a unique uh, number for each file system. You see that it recognizes correctly the version and the revision because it is 1.277. But if you check this number, it's exactly the same like the one that we saw in the first file system at the back. Okay, so we need to change that to the one that is for the uh, smart file system. And that uh, ID, we will find it in this uh, documentation. Now, where exactly it is, 
I guess we can find it in installation, making SFS available for use. And here I see this uh, ID, the identifier. Um, SLD Snake says, do you people use SFS in uh, 68K? I have read recommendations about not using it, but I also have read about PFS, FFS can have its issues. So I think it's a must to make backups of your disks. Uh, I couldn't agree more with what you said, uh, SLD Snake. Now, the smart file system is much faster than the FFS, but uh, on uh, benchmarking that I have done on uh, 68K, but also on uh, the Amiga OS 4, I have seen that the smart file system and the PFS uh, are using more CPU time when you are doing benchmarking or uh, you are uh, opening a huge uh, a, a folder with a, a, a big number of files, especially if these files are quite small. Um, so you see the, the CPU uh, usage go high, and but it is also faster. With the FFS, on the other hand, it is the FFS is lower, um, but it and it also uses uh, less CPU time which is useful when you are doing things in uh, parallel, right? Where, so if you uh, are using the, uh, a browser and you copy files from one partition to the other, you don't want the uh, browser to crawl to death. Uh, so it depends what do you prefer. On the other hand, SFS and PFS are not uh, maintained anymore. The, no one continues to, to, to develop them. The fast file system though is updated on every, uh, almost on every update of the Amiga OS, Amiga OS 3. So from the security side, it is better to go with the fast file system. On the other hand, also you have to think about the system. This, uh, with the Pi Storm, uh, this uh, Amiga, and having an SD card in, in there, the, uh, the file system, if, even if it is an FFS, it, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, we can have uh, 20 megabytes per second uh, transfer of files, right? So it is quite fast. I don't know how much faster it's going to be with the SFS, but even with FFS is quite fast. Now you have to balance all this stuff and uh, decide what exactly you want to, to use. But again, even if there is a disk doctor for the fast file system, uh, it is preferred the sensitive data that you would like to uh, not lose or you would like to, or the, even the, the, the whole setup of your system is uh, to take uh, backups as frequently as possible. The usage of an SD uh, card is um, quite convenient if you want to take it out, connect it to your uh, PC and make a backup of the whole, uh, make an image of the whole uh, SD card. Uh, if this is 32 or 64 uh, gigabytes, you are going to have an image of this and uh, whenever something happens, you just um, restore that image to a new SD card or in the same SD card and everything is going to be there. But it takes more time because you need to take it off, go to the other machine, wait to take this uh, image. Uh, the bigger the SD card is, the bigger file you are going to save, the more time it's going to take. And yeah, it is. It is, uh, but I prefer that as a solution for backup because then you write it to a new SD card and you have everything there. JMA says, I think have a PFS. It's been years since I, uh, I did install. No probs so far. Good, that's good. Uh, SLD Snake, good info. Uh, I agree to on the FFS updated and you can uh, mount FFS on Linux side. Oh, I didn't know that. 
But if you format it with DOS 7, 102 uh, characters, file names, the Linux can't read the file names, in my experience. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, if you are using a fast file system, it is better to use the long uh, uh, character file name support because now the 32 characters are a limit, I guess. I think the, the if you don't use the long names, the, it is 32 characters. Uh, so yeah, I prefer using that even if I lose that support from Linux, which I didn't know that it was working. That's good. Probably the driver for the Linux is, uh, was never updated. Uh, so what we need to do here is to add this uh, DOS type here 5346500 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 
and I don't see anything moving. Maybe the problem is that I didn't do a fast uh, format. Let me try again. Okay. When you have the SD card, always do fast format. It doesn't make sense to format the whole uh, partition. It takes time and I don't know if uh, that's the reason why everything freezed. Maybe it's a problem with the file system. So let's give it a try again. Okay, uh, new cell. If you want to see the parameters of the command, you can just do SFS format like that with a question mark and it gives you all the parameters. So it, there is no fast format, so it was fine. Let's see the, the documentation again. Uh, for full format, use format from Workbench 3.5, 3.9. Okay. The normal format command has special options for fast file system. SFS has special options for smart file system. Okay. So recycled, no. Okay, let's try again. SFS format, uh, device, with a drive, drive, or device. We can use both of them. Drive, DH1, uh, name, applications. Okay, it should be fine. Yeah, it works. Now I can't move uh, the mouse pointer at all, but let's see if uh, anything happens. Let's give it a few seconds. If that fails, I will try to, I will change the file system to the fast file system and see and try with that. Now, if you have um, big uh, resolutions on your Amiga OS uh, 3, there is a package on Aminet, I don't recall how this is named, but there is a package on Aminet that has pointers for high, high resolutions, which uh, are bigger, and you might want to have a look on that uh, if, you, if you would like to, to use it. I don't see any activity on the hard disk, so there might be a problem with the SFS. Let me try one more time. I will um, try to use the newer version that I have available and then try to um, format the partition with that. But as a backup, we have uh, always the option to go to the uh, fast file system, which we know that it works because this uh, uh, the system is uh, the system partition is uh, formatted as fast file system. So let's go here, new cell. Now to update it, the only things that we need to do is to have the uh, new file from this uh, archive. Um, let me show you. As you can see, it extracted only one file inside L here. Actually, I could uh, extract it as it is in system, sys, and asks to replace the old one. I will say yes, fine. So if I go here on my system and L and let's see here, info, 
it should be 1.279 great then we have to go to the HD toolbox again uh, like that select the partitions partition the one that we have uh, that file system and this time we are going to do add update and here we are going to select we have selected the custom file system which is the SFS update file system we select again the file okay now we don't need to change anything and you see that it recognizes the the right division that's fine okay okay save exit and let's reboot again i don't know how many of you are uh, playing uh, at all with uh, files uh, file systems and uh, uh, experiment which one works better for them if you have any uh, ideas or uh, opinions feel free to, to write down uh, at the chat and let's have a discussion about that um, so let's see I see that we don't have any hard disk activity at all even when it boots so I guess when you have PyStorm and use the PyStorm it doesn't uh, use the hard disk LED which might make sense because it is not connected on the internal ID of the system so now it seems it crashed let's try again Okay. For some reason it doesn't boot. So, in this case, I will try to boot from the uh, Gotek and see how it goes from there and see why it stopped uh, booting maybe some uh, conflict with the SFS could that be so all I need is a workbench disk and put from that Let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm trying to boot from the workbench disk in case that uh, there is a problem with the second partition. So what I can do is to either delete the partition or format it for a fast file system and uh, have that working like that as a fast file system partition. In case there is a problem with the PyStorm, I don't know. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in previous streams that uh, this is the first time that I'm using a, a PyStorm on any Amiga. So I don't have a, a lot of experience with that uh, system and I don't know if there are any incompatibilities. If you do, uh, please let me know uh, because that uh, will help me to understand more about the system and avoid some issues. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Let's see in the early startup if we see those uh, the the system partition. No output, nothing yet. What happened? Did I manage to break it completely? Not even early startup. Hmm. Let me remove this. Okay, let's try again. We are going to get there. Doesn't even try to boot from the uh, from the Gotek. So we will see how it goes. Uh, Retro modernist says no idea still yet to get this old uh, 1200 motherboard uh, combo working. Marset says, uh, Mahet says, uh, same here, so no, any idea. Yeah, that's weird. Nothing 
it doesn't output anything. Not even the uh, early startup sequence. Hmm. So many times in different uh, streams I try to, to burn my Amiga and maybe that's the time. Maybe I managed to, to succeed now. But the only thing that I did was to, to set SFS on one of the partitions. That's weird. Okay. Is there a possibility to have issues with uh, heat, maybe? Uh, JMA says SD card got corrupted. I hope not. <laughs> Probably the second partition only, because that's uh, the one we were playing. And uh, if you remember, we were getting the EMU68 uh, screen from the RTG output. So if I go back to the RTG output, we get the... We were getting the EMU, EMU68. So the boot partition should work just fine. If uh, you're right and the second partition, the, the one that has the Amiga side is corrupted, that makes sense. But why doesn't it boot from the Gotek? Or why I don't get um, an output from the native uh, with early uh, startup. Maybe that uh, behaves again. C2 says TV says that it gets signal right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the scan doubler is gone. Yep. It might be the scan doubler. Maybe in the next stream I might need to have a better scan doubler. Maybe take one of the from the other, uh, or an division, a new division to to use in this uh, machine. And yeah, this uh, this scan doubler is so hot. Any LED activity, only the power. But I don't see, even if the scan doubler was the problem, I should see the Gotek loading the disk image, right? So I would know that this is alive, is booting, and. Uh, it loads the workbench, for example. Unless, if the workbench disk is not bootable. Let me try the install. But the workbench disk should be bootable. But better to use the install because the install has the hard disk toolbox, right? So it's better to use this one. Okay, I see the lines in my screen. I don't see them anymore. Okay, I see the lines. I don't see them anymore. Okay, let me shut it down. 
and boot again. But again, why would that um, SD card get corrupted? It's not that we did something weird. Uh, Retro Modernist says recap the scan doubler and put a fan on it. Yeah, yeah, it might in it. It has some um, uh, surface mounted uh, caps uh, that don't seem to have any problem, but it might need uh, some recapping. Uh, Aris Amiga says, what is this green flickering? This is from the scan doubler, right? Yeah, yeah, it's, this is done because the scan doubler is, uh, I, I move it a little bit. Maybe it died completely. Okay. Okay, if I try to remove that. Yeah, I'm not going to, to open right now the scan doubler. But uh, you guys, if you have a PyStorm, what kind of solution do you uh, prefer to, to use for the native uh, system, to, for the native uh, resolutions? Do you have some kind of uh, scan doubler yourself? And or you just drive the the output to some kind of SCART or something else. Oh my God, it is so hot, this scan doubler. But I don't think that the problem is the scan doubler. The Amiga should show the at least the early startup sequence, or it should uh, boot from the external uh, Gotek. Uh, JMA says maybe Emu sixty eight not booting fully, and Amiga has no processor. Hmm. Uh, no hard disk lights, uh, Aris Amiga. Reset the Pi Store. Why not? Let's try that. And since I'm opening this, let me take the SD card, put it in this USB, and try that on my PC and see if we can see at least the partitions and the files in the first partition, the boot partition. Let's see that. Okay, the boot partition is there. It's fine. Okay, cancel. So the boot partition is there and it looks fine. 
no problems with that so let me export it eject it okay let's ah. let's put it in the and I will do what uh, uh, retromodernist said to reset better the pi store okay let's try again Retromodernist says I have read that some of the card connectors are a bit bigger and don't fit properly. Mm. No, this one fits perfectly. Are something? Yeah, of course I shut it down first. <laughs> God. and you know what is going to happen as soon as if I, if I shut down the the stream after 10 minutes this is going to work just fine and everything is going to be flawless <laughs> I know that's that's all what happens every time every time Let's see how it goes. Hey, OP, welcome to the stream. I'm fighting again with this Amiga. Uh, we were having that working fine for a while. Uh, I was playing a little bit with the file systems and trying to install the SFS and after a reboot it doesn't doesn't boot at all and it doesn't boot uh, not even from the external file uh, Gotek so it's a little bit finicky I have the HDMI at the um, connection that comes from the native hey Javier welcome back yeah I, I try to hide most of the things at the back that the, the that's why uh, let's see again one more reboot even if the partition that has the had the uh, partitions for the Amiga was ruined right now or the Amiga partitions uh, were uh, destroyed at least it should be able to boot from the Gotek that's how the Amiga works usually okay Uh, OP, no, I don't have a backup. We are doing the setup here, so everything is is done live on the on the stream. Uh, Javier, yeah, 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 it's a twelve hundred with the Pi Storm. JMA says maybe remove Pi Storm and try boot from Gotek. See if we get picture. Yeah, let's try that. 
let me try that. Remove the pie store. Okay. Great. That's actually a good point to see if the, the problem, the main problem is the uh, scan doubler. But again, I would expect that the drive should boot. I see on my screen, I don't know how visible this is for you, I see the, the vertical lines that come from the uh, scan doubler. So this is working. It seems it is working. I see the, the ROM screen. You don't see that. Maybe because the capture card doesn't pick up anything right now. Let me reset that. Okay. Javier, no, I didn't uh, change the capture card yet. I'm uh, waiting for the new one to come, maybe Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, Retro Modernist, it is a bank holiday Monday, so I guess uh, Tuesday I'm going to get it. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm having the uh, screen uh, of the, the ROM, as you can see, probably. But for some reason the capture card doesn't work at all. Oh my god, let me try again. Okay, main view. Yeah, the capture card doesn't work at all. The Gotek doesn't boot. It still doesn't boot. Let me reset it. Which is weird. Uh, Now it started booting. 
okay but you can't see much you see now it boots okay so what I need to do is to test and uh, reconnect the PyStorm and test it again if it's going to boot uh, OP, yeah, the Gotek usually needs to be DF0 but it also is able also to, to boot from uh, DF1 uh, I think that's something that can be done with the uh, 1200 or uh, I, I tried that with even with ROM 3.0 and that works with uh, that ROM as well so I don't know if that works for every Amiga but for this Amiga for the 1200 you can boot from uh, DF1 yeah Aerotromodernis it is a weird Amiga <laughs> after all all the Amigas are weird uh, Javier yeah it booted normally we have set up a uh, a lot. Uh, we went uh, RTG, it worked fine, we got even 1080p on RTG and now that I connected again the the um, the PyStorm doesn't even boot on from the from the drive. So yeah probably something is really ruined in the file system. Maybe the file system of the SD card. Retro Modern says I had an external drive on my original 1200. Uh, I cannot remember if I booted from DF1 okay uh, we we have done that uh, many times here with uh, df1 and it works market says uh, amigas are weird but we love them absolutely yeah 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 uh, because because of the their weirder, weirderness we learn a lot of stuff but sometimes like this one uh, we struggle a lot as well so yeah check the plastic hasn't come off the pie storm screws and sorting on the keyboard yeah let me have a look on that actually what i'm going to do is to to remove the keyboard completely remove it like that put it at the side it's everything in place and let's boot and see what it happens okay The Pi logo, yes, the, you mean the EMU68, uh, Javier, la, right? It uh, shows up when I connect it to the, the HDMI output. We have red lights here and there. I don't see the SD card uh, LED to flicker so I don't think that it reads anything from that mm. 
No, it, it doesn't uh, flash at all. Let me try and put the uh, the keyboard because sometimes it needs a reset so it starts to boot before it starts to boot so let me keep it in the air okay you know because the the way that python works tries to load first the kickstart and everything in the fpga that is on the pystorm uh, 32 I guess it is an FPGA, I'm not sure, to be honest with you. And that uh, doesn't even give you, uh, it, it is not even uh, ready to uh, load anything because it doesn't have the kickstart loaded. So sometimes it, 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 it needs a reset. Usually it should do the reset on its own, but sometimes it needs a manual reset. But now, even with a manual reset, I don't see any flickering for the SD card. Yeah, doesn't work for some reason. Hey, smart cooks, welcome. Uh, thank you for being here. OP, yeah, but probably, maybe. Did the SD break? Yeah, probably. Maybe another clean SD card. That means that I need to do all the installations from scratch uh, until we had before. Okay. I think that the problem is that for some reason the kickstart is not going to the... If I reset I see green light flickering before the reset of the system. You know what, I'm going to try and re rewrite in the boot partition all the files uh, that are needed for the PyStorm. Maybe that fixes the problem. Yeah, maybe it's a, an SD card uh, problem, a JMA. Let's try that. And if that is not the solution, I don't know what it is because as you can see even if there is no uh, hard disk in the partition for the Amiga, from the Amiga side the we should even get the uh, the kickstart screen which doesn't happen so let me try that i don't even get the kickstart screen um, so what do we need we need uh, i have here the rom i think yes which is this one i'm going to copy that here and remove the previous one do they have the same size the same size remove the previous one uh, like that yes and rename this one to kick dot rom okay and we also need the the latest Emu 
from the releases. Come on. Okay, here, so seems something wrong in config file or as you say boot partition, yeah I think so, I hope so because that is going to be much easier to be fixed, but again the partition, this partition is loaded fine in uh, Windows. It shouldn't be broken. I don't see why it, it, it will break. Because we are doing stuff from the Amiga side. Uh, let's see. And I don't remember me doing any uh, anything with the the boot partition from the Amiga side. You remember that in hard disk toolbox you see two partitions, two two main disks. Uh, actually, the one is for the 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 boot that is uh, formatted as FAT32, so you can have access to that from Windows or any other machine, right? And um, I didn't mess with that, so why it bro broke? I don't know. So it takes uh, sorry, it takes a little bit of time because I'm doing stream. <laughs> so yeah, it is a bit a little bit slower. Um, SLD snake, yeah, it seems it seems something happened uh, while I was trying to. to uh, set up the second partition with the SFS and the system stopped uh, booting completely when the PyStorm is uh, connected which is quite weird so I'm trying to uh, Copy again the EMU68 in case that was corrupted somehow. I already uh, copied the uh, ROM again. So let me copy the files from the EMU68. These ones. Uh, we haven't done any changes before, so I'm not going to do any changes now. Okay. Uh, SLD say, Snake says it happened to me sometimes when I switched the Amiga on again, no booting, and I had to rewrite an image. Uh, do you remember that was because of the of the boot partition, the one that we uh, store the EMU sixty eight uh, data, or because of the uh, partition that has the hard disk uh, for the Amiga. I haven't changed anything in the config txt. It is untouched, yes. But that's the weird thing that even if the hard disk is not there, I should get the uh, the the ROM, the screen of the ROM, right? Javier says uh, file system FFS or PFS. For the system partition, I use FFS, but I was trying to create a new uh, partition and install SFS there, the smart file system, which probably it's not that smart. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see any difference. 
but let's let's wait and let's do a reset first And the weird thing is that it doesn't boot even from the... from the external Gotek. Uh, SLD Snake says I'm seeing the SD extender not so long i have a long one to the rf modulator place module place yeah okay it can be an issue ah okay yes the rom but on pal or net scan screen not on rtg yeah the, right now i have it uh, on the pal the native output uh, and i'm not getting anything there if i remove the pi storm I have the Gotek booting and the um, and I can see the uh, the native and the ROM just fine if I remove the pistol. So maybe I need to redo everything from scratch. Yeah, Javier. Yeah. I had uh, I have that uh, removed. Now it is connected, but I had that removed. Okay, let me move a little bit the Pi Storm. Maybe it needs to be a little bit back and forward and back. You know, it might need a little bit of massage. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seem that it wants to work anymore. So I'm going to give it a try after this stream. Try to find the solution. In case that uh, it won't work, uh, it continues to fail, I will try to set up the second partition, the partition for the hard disk again from scratch and bring it up to the uh, position where we had that before this failure and try to play a little bit with that. Uh, yeah, retro modernist, because right now uh, I'm, I'm trying to, to make it work and uh, this doesn't show any sign of life. So I might need to uh, set up everything from scratch. So I, I don't want you to, to stay here and see everything again right um sld nexus it worked better for me with the sd uh, dot clock setting i didn't notice any speed downgrade is this one of the new uh settings that were added in the last version of the emu 68 Uh, Javier says, so you need two SD, one with working OS and another cloned with testing. Yeah, maybe it is a good idea to, before every any uh, stream, to have uh, the SD card cloned and then uh, do whatever. So if something fails, like uh, right now, at least I'm going to have uh, a backup. Like Amiga OS 4 SD boot SD. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, the, the, I, th I guess the, the idea with the PyStorm is that if you have the expansion that takes the CM4, the Computer Module 4, or maybe in the future a newer version, there is a, a, a place there to put an uh, NVMe. That would be great. SLD Snake says, I meant you can try to set the TXT of the FAT32 SD clock equals to 30. With this options, option, you reduce the megahertz of the SD port. It's related with the distance of the extender in the, in the card. Yeah, but right now I have the SD on the Python, right? So I don't have any extender. Do an express stream before Friday if you have any progress, please. Yep, uh, I will not move further from where we were, uh, just to, to make sure that is uh, going to be ready with the uh, RTG and maybe an extra partition. SLD Snake says, and regular image dumps of the, yeah, of the SD card. <laughs> if you don't, uh, uh, make it if you don't lose everything, you never get uh, backups, I guess. Uh, so, next week, the next two weeks, I'm not going to do any streams because I'm flying uh, back to Greece for a few days. Um, in uh, 13th and 14th of uh, April, we are having our, our annual uh, Amiga uh, event back in Greece. And I'm going to travel there and uh, with some friends where we organize that event. We are going to have a lot of fun uh, playing with Amigas. I, I hope to, to make that uh, PyStorm work because I want to, to bring it uh, with me there and have it at the event. And uh, so I'm going to not do uh, the next two weeks any stream. Um, but if... Uh, I find time, I might do and you know, a, a, a stream out of the blue come uh, maybe earlier before the Friday, Friday because I'm flying on Friday. So if this is uh, possible, I'm going to do something. Um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it for today. Again, I, I'm sorry, but we, we don't have uh, many things to, to see because it seems that everything goes wrong. <laughs> it's it's that uh, thing. And uh, since I started my uh, streams, you know, things are not working as they used to to work. And uh, yeah, I need to, to get familiar again with all this stuff. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. Um, I wish I could uh, show you much more and uh, have more fun with uh, the Amiga. I'm going to to fight the rest of the day with it. Don't forget to have a look on uh, the revision event. I'm going to have it 24 hours playing all day uh, today and the rest of the weekend because I love uh, revision and it's, it's a great party there. Uh, thank you everyone for being here again and for your patience with all the stuff that I am doing uh, on this stream. Uh, have a great uh, weekend. And before we close, I would like to, to thank uh, all of you for being here again. And um, if you want to, to follow me and follow all the stuff that I am doing for the Amiga community, for the Amiga OS 3, Amiga OS 4, Morphos communities, and also all the applications that I'm uh, developing that I uh, give uh, free of charge to, to anyone and they are mostly open source as well. Um, have a look on my coffee page. This is my uh, Amiga, uh, exclusively Amiga uh, blog. Uh, I have there uh, things that I am doing and uh, also I explain all this stuff and things that I am thinking about or ideas and stuff like that. So have a look on that. I would, uh, I always upload stuff there like the 
the latest update that I did for the Light Excel that Javier uh, mentioned uh, in the chat. Uh, I'm really happy that this uh, editor is used by a lot of developers. So yeah, I'm going to keep on uh, developing that. Uh, also, I would like to thank the monthly supporters of mine who donate every month uh, uh, to, to me and uh, to continue doing whatever I'm doing. Uh, those are Breed, Christopher White, Daniel Zedlika, Emek, Livelord and Tim Grottons. I'd like uh, to thank them uh, personally and uh, yeah, take care. Uh, let's see if there is anyone that we could raid. I always forget to raid at the end of the stream, but yes, let, let me see if there is anyone who is streaming right now. Preferable if there is someone doing some uh, Amiga stuff. Let's see. And maybe we can move there. Ah, I see that uh, the old man that games is uh, streaming. Usually he plays games on different systems, not only for the Amiga. And uh, I have seen him doing uh, playing games on uh, Macs, old Macs or uh, PCs. Let's give him a raid. Uh, let me see what he's doing right now. Ah, he's playing something. Uh, okay, let's let's have a uh, let's have a raid. Thanks everyone for uh, being here. Thank you, Aris Amiga, C277, Javier, SLD Snake. Uh, FF Shock, thank you. Marhead5, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Cloak Talian, I see that you probably are here. Amiga Live. Um, JMA80, OP, thank you for being here as well. And uh, Smartcooks, thank you for being here. And um, have a good one and uh, thank you for joining me. See you next time. Bye bye.